All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about some of the basics of SAT math. And I want to show you what SAT math problem solving actually looks like if you're planning to get a 750 plus SAT math score or a perfect SAT math score. So the first thing I need you to do is get a few blank sheets of paper and a pencil. And we're going to look at this problem here. If a squared minus b squared equals 10 and a plus b equals 2, what is a minus b? Now, if you don't understand why there's letters in math or why there's these tiny floating numbers, we call those exponents, if none of that looks familiar to you at all, if you've never seen that before, please just email me at learn at voramethod.com. We'll set up a free consultation, hopefully be able to provide you some good guidance. But if you, even if you don't know how to solve this, if, at least if this makes sense to you, if you understand variables and exponents and, and, and some of that, what you're going to do now is you're going to try to do this problem and spend about say five or 10 minutes on it. Don't go crazy just now. You're not gonna, you don't spend two or three hours on this just yet. That's gonna be much later on. For now, just spend five or 10 minutes and try to figure this problem out. Just do your best with it for, for that period of time. Now go ahead and pause the video now and actually try to do this problem on the piece of paper. Now, one more thing before you pause the video, don't erase anything. Just if you have more things to do, just use more paper and because we want to be able to analyze what it is that you're doing so far, how you're thinking about this stuff so far. So go ahead and write out whatever you can, whatever you think about, just put, put any ideas you have. If you have an actual solution, write it out and then solve it. If you make any progress at all, just write that down. Whatever you want to do, do that on the piece of paper. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so at this point, you should have spent about five or 10 minutes to try to solve this problem, unless you just happen to solve this problem really quick. But if, it, if you couldn't solve the problem, hopefully you spent at least five or 10 minutes trying out a few different things. Now, about 80% of people with this problem, here's what they try. They try plugging in different numbers for A and B. And it doesn't usually go anywhere. It doesn't, it doesn't get the answer. What, what, what's the problem with that? Most people try to plug in whole numbers as if you were in kindergarten, but since you're not in kindergarten, you're going to have decimals and fractions and all that kind of stuff. So the sheer number of different things you could try for A and B is staggeringly huge. So it never really ends up working. Now, if you did that, that's totally fine. That's where, Again, that's where about 80% of people start out. And a pretty large percentage of those people who are our students end up with 750 plus math SAT math scores. Some end up with perfect scores. So don't freak out if you did that. That's just where you are right now. We're going to build up your skills. So that is option one. Now, option two would be that you tried what you would have learned how to do in your school algebra class. You would have, you start with the simpler equ equation. You have A plus B equals two. You solve for B, you get B equals two minus A. Then you're going to replace, in the, other, in the other equation, you're going to replace this b with a 2 minus a. So a squared minus b squared equals 10 becomes a squared minus 2 minus a squared equals 10. Then we algebraically simplify that a lot. And then after you do all this, you use the quadratic formula. You solve for b. Then you solve after you've gotten for, after you solve for, for a, sorry, then you plug in A and you solve for B. And then after that, you solve for A minus B. And that's algebraically right. It's a mathematically correct solution. And if you did this, by the way, if you did this, you're already in the top 20%. You're ready for serious advanced SAT math training. Now, if, if this made sense to you, even if you didn't think to do this, if this process makes sense to you, if, if this idea of solving for variable and then substituting, if that's something you're familiar with, even if what you actually did was just plug in random numbers, that's still, that's still okay. It means you're ready for advanced SAT math training, for that to shoot for a perfect SAT math score. If this material didn't make any sense at all, if, if this process, if you're just like, I have no idea what's going on here. I've never seen anything like that before in my life. That means before you do any really advanced SAT math training, you're going to have to really build up some of your algebra skills. I know there's a lot of companies out there that'll tell you that you can get do well on the SAT without knowing any algebra. But their definition of well is not our definition of well. They're not talking about a top 1% score. They're saying if you want to get from 400 to 450, which in my opinion are both pretty low scores, 
then you can do that without algebra. And they're right. You can get from a 400 to a 450 without learning any algebra. But if you're trying to get a, between a 750 and an 800, you need to know algebra. You need to be comfortable with some of the basic ideas of algebra, with all the basic ideas of algebra. And so if this didn't make any sense, again, just email me at learnadvormethod.com. We'll set up a free consultation and, and give you some guidance on how you can build those skills. Uh, whether you do that with our company or whether you do that somewhere else, there's plenty of free online resources we can point you to. Uh, but just send me an email so we can make sure that you're that when you put in all this work, you're at least doing it efficiently and you're, you're getting on the right track. So let's take a look at the actual most effective way to do it, the most efficient way to do it. Option three. So in this case, we see a squared minus b squared equals 10. And I start by factoring a squared minus b squared. I get a plus b times a minus b equals 10. If that's familiar to you, great. If that's totally unfamiliar to you, again, we're going to need to do some underlying algebra work. Totally fine. Then I substitute, re replace the a plus b with a 2. I get 2 times a minus b equals 10. a minus b equals 10 uh, over 2. You divide both sides by 2, and you get a minus b equals 5. Now, there's a few things that I want you to notice. The first thing is that this correct option, option three, the fastest way, is still algebraic. The advanced SAT techniques are still based on algebra. They're just a little bit more clever than the kind of algebra you might be familiar with from school. If you did this, by the way, you're already thinking like a perfect score. Just do a bunch of practice tests and, and you should be good to go. Uh, most students, though, obviously, obviously most students, very, very few students think of this, maybe 1%, if, if that, think of this, I, this, this on their own. If you did this on your own, you're good to go. If you can follow this, even if you didn't think to do it on your own, if you can understand this, you're also in a really good position and you're ready for some serious SAT, advanced SAT math training. If this isn't really making any sense to you, then again, we're going to need, need to do a little bit of algebra of some kind to build up those underlying skills. Again, you need to have algebra. You need to be able to do algebra pretty well to get a 750 plus SAT math score. And that's gonna take work. I'm not gonna lie to you. It will take work to build up those algebra skills. It won't take as much work as it would to in school. I mean, you can do this independently much more efficiently than you can in, in, inside of a school. Uh, or if you work with Vora method, you can do it even more efficiently, but there's, it's still going to take some work. Still, we're talking about, you know, months, not days to get to the level of mastery that we're talking about. Is it worth it? Let, let me tell you this, speaking of from, a, as, a, from a, as a college strategist, if your goal is to get into a top tier college, your SAT score matters more than all of your school quizzes, homeworks, tests, exams, all of it combined. Your SAT score is going to be matter, it's going to matter more than everything you did in school combined when it comes to getting into college. So if you're trying to get into a top tier uh, college, an Ivy League college, a combined medical program, this matters more than that. It's almost always worth the effort. Now, I want to go back to that first option real quick. Option one, where you just basically plugged in numbers and, and it obviously didn't work. If you did that, if you look either in your hand or in at the desk or table that you're, that you're sitting at, you'll probably notice that there's a calculator nearby. And later on, we're going to talk about why using calculators isn't actually as effective as a lot of people think it is. It can actually, shockingly enough, using a calculator on the SAT can actually lower your score. It can actually get in the way of building some of the skills that you need to. And we'll talk about that later. The other really important thing that I want you to see, though, is this. These questions are hard, but I want you to start to think of the SAT as your opponent, not as your friend. And when I say your opponent, I'm saying that you should start to think of the SAT as kind of like this really clever, devious opponent. If the SAT was a Batman villain, the SAT would be the Riddler. The SAT makers, they want to play a game with you. Yeah, they want to trip you up, but they want to do it in this playful game way. So there's going to be all these clues all over the place. When I look at this problem and I see this A squared minus B squared, to me, that's an obvious and immediate clue. That's a clue that says, here's a thing that people factor a lot, factor this. If, on the other hand, they said A squared minus, say, B to the third, I would be bewildered because there, there's no clue. There's no none of that secret code going on over there. So understand two things. Yes, the SAT is absolutely going to be your adversary. 
but it's going to be a tricky adversary that's going to always be giving you hints. Not not hints. There's always going to be clues all the time like you're dealing with the, with the Riddler. Now, in some of these other videos, we're going to talk about others, some of the other major techniques. But the key thing to realize for now is that the correct solution, the best solutions to these, to these problems are going to be fast, they're going to be efficient, and they're going to be algebraic. And that plugging in numbers is not going to be part of the most effective solution to any SAT math problem ever.